Welcome to another video for Advancing Car. Um, today we're doing a how-to on fitting a Halo <coughs> F995 into a T6. Um, so this is a Billy Basic T6 with the um, with the entry-level head unit. It's got no multifunction steering wheel, um, but we think this customer is going to be kind of a returning customer, so gradually upgrading and what will happen is the halo will be able to integrate with more of the van. Um, so yeah, so let's get going really. Um, this is when you buy a halo from us um, and it's going into your T6 or your 5.1, um, this is what you'll receive. You'll get your halo all in the box obviously and then you'll get your T6 specific fitting kit that's in here. You'll get your little pocket that goes underneath and then what we've also done is we've worked hard to um, sort out retention cables and retention kits for stuff in the T6. So you've got the uh, GPS that's in the wing mirror. It might be connected up, it might not be, depending on the spec of your van. Um, you might have DAB in your wing mirror as well. Um, if it has, then we retain that as well. And then depending on which USB you have next to just above your glove box, if you've got the uh, USB that has the AUX underneath, unfortunately we can't retain that USB, but if you don't have the AUX then we can retain that as well. So we've got various leads and bits and pieces that means we can fit a halo or you can fit a halo if you buy it all from us and it retains everything as much as possible without having to have stuff mounted on the dash, stuff mounted on the screen. Um, this chap particular today was very adamant that he didn't want an on-screen dab antenna and I assured him that no, that's not going to be the case. Everything's going to be as tucked away as possible and the halo itself is going to be as integrated as possible. So um, let's have a quick look at it all, shall we? Right, so I've got everything unpacked. Um, obviously it's not all out of those bags, but we'll just run through roughly what everything is. Uh, so in the white fitting kit box, you have the actual fitting kit that makes the unit fit the T6 uh, or the T5.1. So you've got your FM adapter um, with its little amplifier and everything. <clears throat> you've then got your quad lock loom with UART, which is how it, create, how it interacts with all the can and everything like that. So we'll grab this out. There we go. So that's your main, this is your main um, quad lot loom that interacts with the can and everything. And then this is just an adapter um, that if you've got a T5.1, you don't need it. If you um, have got a T6, then you do need it. Um, it's because of the MIB difference and things. Um, it's mainly to do with actually where the power comes through in the quad lock. Um, so that's those. You then obviously get your fascia which allows everything to fit into the van it's the same shape as the original head unit but obviously everything fits inside here pocket and the main drive let's put that back in there so you can get damaged it's a nice kind of soft feel plastic that ties in really nice with everything but when you're unpacking it all and fitting it just try to make sure you uh, you know keep it protected you don't want to get scratched um, you've then got your mounting brackets with screws and things uh, that's the pocket and then we go on to the actual what's in the Alpine box. So in the Alpine box at the top you'll notice that you've got this packet here that's got the various um, fitting bits of plastics that go on once the main screen has been bolted on you then tidy it up with these these bits here. Uh, you've then got the main drive itself with the USBs, so on these newer models, <coughs> the USBs are permanently fitted uh, to the back and then you, we then route those through to where we're gonna put them. So in a T6, this beige charging one just goes through to the glove box. This black one is the one that we use to retain the original USB, because then your car play is in a position where you were originally using your USB. So that's the main drive. In this pink bag, again, be very gentle with this one. I always keep this in here until the last kind of you know, 10, 15 minutes of everything is <clears throat> the screen itself. Comes with its protective cover on everything. There's all the mechanism at the back to allow it to adjust. And also you can, these screws here allow you to adjust the height uh, depending on how you want it to sit in your dash. But again, always keep that in this nice soft pink bag and then keep it out of the way. Um, and then you have your main Alpine 
loom that comes with all Alpine hedging. It's basically, it's all the leads uh, you might require for fitting, basically. I'll chuck that down there. Um, <clears throat> this is your standard um, ISO wiring kit with the old school kind of uh, power plug and speaker plug and everything like that. Um, but we're not going to be using that because obviously we're using quad lock, so we don't need that. We've then got the microphone. Now we have to use the microphone uh, because we can't retain the van's microphone due to the fact that the microphone in the van is a passive microphone and this is specific to Alpine with its own gain levels and everything. So we have to use this, but once it's fitted, um, it looks really smart to be fair. And it's kind of a, it's the better of, a, of some evils sort of thing. Um, it's, it's fitted centrally, which you'll see later. Um, and yeah, works well, looks smart. We've then got the GPS, um, but obviously we're going to retain the van's GPS, which is already in, already in the wing mirror but you might use that, you might not use that. We then have um, like the cables that deal with the UART box. So it has the speed pulse on it. Um, it then also has all the bits for things like the rear camera. So if you've got a reversing camera, that will go into here. Uh, you've got the UART plug and all those other plugs. Some get used, some don't. Um, so the drive recorder, that's if you're using an Alpine dash cam, that would then go into there. Uh, you then have your, um, your phono plug. So instead of like some head units, you have your various phonos in the back here. Alpine supply you with a lead that then plugs into the back of the unit and then you have your phonos for your front speakers, rear speakers, subs, if you're having amps and things like that. And then we have our last lead, which has um, mainly we only use this for the microphone, uh, which is this. And then obviously you've got other for other vehicles you can use like the steering remote input using a jack style adapter uh, and things like that. Um, other than that you've either got you've then just got a little HDMI clamp that goes in here so the HDMI socks go in here this then bolts in um, and then you've got your fixing screws and some little cover panel bits um, and then this piece of plastic is for cars that aren't having the, uh, the little pocket um, and you need to cover up some of the areas, you can then cut this to then fit. Um, it's, it's kind of good, it's kind of not, um, but I suppose it's, it's, it's a good way of covering up a lot of the, the kind of front fascia area if you've then got a large surround, depending on the vehicle you're fitting into. It doesn't really um, matter for today because we have a pocket. Um, but yeah, so we'll, uh, we'll go and start taking the van apart and then what we'll do is I'll set up this loom, um, you know, cloth tape it. I then solder in the, uh, the speed pulse and I basically get this loom ready so that all the things I need are attached to it so it can just be plugged in and then everything run to it and um, we can then just build the unit, put it in. We found that's the nicest and best way to do everything. So it just makes the whole install um, effortless basically um, and means that if anyone ever takes that unit out they can see that you know it's been a thought out process of everything going in rather than just plug it in chuck it in and then yeah it works behind the scenes so you can't see it so um, yeah we'll get on with doing the van uh, right so we're going to um, start taking the van apart Areas I need to work, obviously this central area, I need to take the, van, the vents out. Um, this all comes out as one piece of trim. Radio then comes out. Um, I need to take the A-pillar off so I can run the microphone all the way up. I also need to access the interior light area so I can just anchor um, the microphone a little bit, just stops it kind of flapping around and things like that. Um, and then also I need to take off that the driver's side door card so I can get to the um, factory GPS plug that is normally kind of hanging around in here somewhere. Uh, it just means I can attach my cable to it, bring it all along, and then we're, again, retaining everything we need to. Um, talking of retention as well, I also need to drop the glove box out so I can get to the factory USB here to disconnect that, take it apart, and retain all that. So um, in terms of door cards and stuff. I think we've got a video on how to remove a door card. So I'll run you through quickly how to take these vents out and how to get your radio out. Right, so nice easy job this is. Um, lovely on a T6. 
get your trim tool. And then what we're gonna do is we're just gonna go in underneath here. Normally, you end up pressing the hazard button, but that doesn't matter. Uh, so you're just gonna wiggle it in, and you can see it goes in, and then just give it a little bit of a tease, and you can see it's all starting to lift. And then you just work your way along. And then what I do is I push it in, and instead of pushing down that way and getting the levers that way, I kind of lift. And then it lifts up the side here. I'll then get my fingers underneath, bring the trim tool in, and as with all bits of trim, you get some horrible creaks and cracks and noises. And then you just work your way around and release. All very different, as always. Come on. And work your way along the bottom. There go the hazard lights. Here we go. Then again, up the side here. And then you just wiggle along the top and it all starts to come out nicely. There we go, right. Something was just getting a little bit caught up there, possibly this one here. But yeah, so it all just comes out as one unit really. A um, little bit of wiggling, don't just rip it out, otherwise you'll, you'll break something. But um, that's that whole fascia out, so you can just put that somewhere nice and carefully. Then you've just got four T20s that are holding your radio in. Um, also just remember, that because you're changing your radio, always check your eject button to make sure you haven't left any CDs in there, you know, now 45 or something like that. And then uh, just wind out these screws. Put them in one of your top pockets. that one out. <clears throat> okay, then we slide out your old head unit. Well, it's going to be your old head unit and you'll see you've got your quad lock, which will just pinch and release. That then comes out of there. You've then got dab antenna. Now, if you turn them over, you can then see that you've got these little locking tabs. So what you do is you can slide that out and then you pinch it and then wiggle them off like that. And what this little white tab is doing is it's moving that little fin there, which is the locking tab. So we need that because that's obviously dab and we're gonna retain that. This is then FM. There we go. And then this one, we're not gonna be retaining because that's to do with all the uh, USB and things like that. But we're gonna be fitting our own new lead. And there we go, that's the old head unit out. Um, and that's, yeah, this is what we're gonna be attaching to where we need to, anything we don't use, mainly this plug here, this mustard one, just gets taped back so it doesn't rattle and bang against anything. Um, so I'll now crack on and get the A-pillar out so I can run my microphone. Uh, I'll get the glove box out so I can get to the USB and I'll get the door card out so I can get to the GPS. And then, uh, and then we'll start making up the loom for the Alpine so that it can all just start going in, basically. Right, so I've taken the uh, bits off I need to take off in the van. Now I'm gonna take the door card off. Uh, we've got a video on how to do this, um, but you know, it's, Move the handle, got two bolts behind here, bolt down here, cut a couple of um, like half turn 10 mil um, plastic sections here. Um, and then just to make your life easier, pop out the switches first and unplug those. And then, yeah, you pop the, uh, carefully pop the door card off. And then once I've got the van, once I've got this off, I'm then in a state where the van's fully taken apart as much as I need it to be. And I can uh, get on with making up my loom, uh, ready for it all to go in. Right, so I've got all the looms out um, and uh, now what I'm do gonna do is just go through and um, prep everything that I can do, really. So uh, we're gonna attach this green-white speed pulse to this green-white here. Um, the, this gets plugged into the UART. Tell you what, let's just get on and do it now, actually, shall we? So 
Let's, uh, let's unwind that, put that there. That's obviously gonna get cut down because it's massively long. So what I like to do is because it just keeps everything um, kind of even and equal, I plug in the UART into there and then this is just gonna go run over the top and I pull that kind of straight. It gets a bit awkward sometimes just because everything wants to move around. That's then gonna pull to there and we're gonna join that roughly about that sort of length like that. So we'll cut that there, do a nice little solder join. So that's that gonna be ready. Um, what I'm also going to do is cloth tape this box because that's going in all the void where everything's gonna be. Yeah, you've got some foam over this quad lock here, um, but anything else that we can cloth tape, then we will do. So this box, we'll just bung in a little bit of cloth tape around. Obviously it can, could still knock against something, um, but with the cloth tape being on there, it just minimizes any sort of noise really. Um, and it's just that little attention to detail, which is always nice. Uh, doesn't take much, just adds a couple of minutes to your job. Um, but again, it's, it's just about that bit of forethought to make sure everything is as neatly fitted as it can be, really. No one likes taking out a unit or working on a car and then going, wow, what a horrible, horrific bird's nest that is. That's never fun. Right. Um, so what I'll do is we'll attach these. That's gonna go onto there like that. I'm also going to take this blue here, which has the spade connector on it. Now this is antenna power. And what I'm gonna do with this is solder that to this one here. So this is a little amplifier for the FM. Um, and uh, I'm gonna solder those together and cloth that. And then anything else I can do to just cloth everything, make everything a bit neater um, and bring it all. So all I need to do is plug it in I'll do that here where I've got the space and um, and I can it's just easier basically. So I'll get on and do all that now. So that's the speed pulse soldered, um, the FM power soldered as well. Now what we'll do is we'll take this little adapter, um, because obviously this plugs into the twin white FM plug that's in your van. And this slides onto these. Um, so this pink, pink bit here is like a locking mechanism. And um, what it does is it locks around these little pink bits. So you slide them in. So they're sitting as far in as they can go, like that. I intend to just put my finger over the top so it's all being held in place. And then you just wiggle this down to get a nice little click. And then you know they're in. Right, now that's done. I'm now going to just work my way along and just cloth tape everything just so it's, it's covered, protected, and just a lot smarter. Um, with various little bits of plugs, you know, rear camera gets used quite often, so I might leave that out as its own one that's pretty free. But these ones, it's very rare that these get used, so you can kind of keep those kind of bundled together. Obviously these ones I'll keep maybe together until about here, then I'll separate out, let that go over the top, and then I'll just work my way through and cloth tape up this main loom. And then that's pretty much that done. You know, that could be plugged into the car and it's ready and waiting for me for when I'm then ready to um, you know, run the microphone through and plug that in, uh, sort the GPS and go out from there. So uh, let's get on and do that now.
Right, loom's all done. It's all clothed and ready to go. Obviously, it's still there's still a lot going on, but at least now it just looks a lot tidier. And when it gets put in, it's not just gonna be a big old jumble of um, cables. So um, this one here on its own, I've bundled these up because I don't need these. This is just where the microphone's gonna get plugged into. Um, this is the power cable that then runs off. This is the CAN interface uh, plug with the rear camera uh, out ready if someone if they want to have it fitted at a later date. Um, then these are just like an auxiliary power that comes off the CAN box. So if you had a dash cam, you could wire it into here. You've got battery, ignition, and ground. Uh, and then other things I've done. So this little blue here that is coming out, this is your remote wire. So if you did have um, an amp or say an underseat sub that was powered and things, that would be then the remote that's in there. So I've left those bits out, but everything else all cluffed up and neat and tidy, ready to be put into the van. Um, next, the only thing I now need to do is just sort out our, um, our GPS retention leads, um, do that, and then also whip out the uh, factory USB and just kind of build that so I can retain that. And then we can jump into the van and I can just start putting everything in basically. Um, once all those cables are in and run, I can then uh, build a unit with a cage, pop it on in, and we're good to power up, test it, make sure everything's working. Right, so I'm just, uh, just thought I'd set up the USB retention. Um, so I've popped out the unit from the car. Obviously this is what it looks like with the USB normally in there. And then this is what slides out. It's just got kind of two clips here. I've just kind of gone on and done it because sometimes it all, comes apart nice and easily. Other times you're there faffing for a little bit just to try and get it unclipped. Um, so it's just got these two kind of shoulder clips here that clip in here and then slides out. And then on either side, you've got three little clips um, to release. Now I use a Stanley blade uh, just very carefully, obviously, just to get in and, um, and just lift them. And then where you can kind of wedge like a little screwdriver in. Once you've got one side going and then you can work your way around and then it comes apart like this. Now you then remove this section and we don't need that so that can go away. And then we take our USB retention and place it in with the circuit board the way, the same way up it was before. And that just kind of sits in like that. Then you take your cover, line it all up and click it all down. There you go. And you can see now it's all clicked on. The tiny little gap that you've got to get in there with your knife or whatever you use to then just kind of release them and lift it all up. But I'll let you play with that. And then you just then uh, make sure it's kind of going to go in the right way. So it's got a keyway here. So it can't go in that way because it's going to hit. So you just flip it over. Keyway is going to slide in there and then you push it all the way home. And now, as you can see, when that goes back in, that's just going to look like a normal USB, but we've got the retention. So what's going to happen is this lead is then going to plug into the back of here. And as you can see, I've already just clothed this just to neaten it up. I'll put a little bit of cloth over to here, A, to hold it and B, stop it from banging against anything. And then this is what's going to plug into the black USB that's coming out the back of the unit. Um, so now that's all done, we can get on and thread down the, uh, the microphone through the van, anchor it all with some, uh, with some cable ties down the A-pillar, get that routed through and start getting some stuff into the van. So we can grab our loom that we've got. And this is going to quad lock to quad lock. That's going to go into there. Line it all up. Click it all down. That's now connected. <clears throat> and then we've also got, what else we've we got here? We've got our dab retention lead, which is going to plug into the factory dab. Once we've done all this, we can just put a little bit of cloth around some of these, just again, stop some knocking, vibrating and holds them all in place. We're not gonna need that one, so we can cloth this one back in a second. Spin those round so we can then plug in. Now this one, this one can be a bit tricky sometimes because obviously you can 
move the pins in the plug. So what I try and do is on the back, push the plugs down so they stay kind of central, and then you've just got to wiggle it in. Obviously, it's not a, it's not necessarily a, a factory plug, so you've just got to wiggle it and just be a bit patient with it. Sometimes they go straight in, sometimes they don't. So we'll just there we go. That one's gone in nicely. Close the lock, and that's on. So that's the FM. And then what I quite like to do is just to organise everything a little bit so we know what's going into the Alpine and what's going back into here. So what I'll do is I'll get my can plug, my power plug and my FM and then also my dab and for the moment I'll bring them together like this and then what else have we got here? We've got our one that's going to run to the microphone and then what we can do is just for the moment put a cable tie around that and then as we run things down we can either add to them or do whatever we need to do really. So now we know that this little bundle here is what's going to be plugging into the Alpine. Um, so now I can then poke this through this hole here and just let it hang down where the glove box would go because all this can get you know cable tied and clothed up into position clicks in there and as you can see that just looks like a normal USB again um, right let's put a bit of cable bit of cloth on the yellow plug at the back and then we'll start routing the microphone so I'm just clothing the yellow plug back onto the original loom just so it's out the way and isn't going to bang and knock against anything. So there we go, like I said, that's all now, all the loom is in, and um, once we've run the microphone down and plugged it into here, a little bit of tape just to hold it, um, we've then got just the GPS to run across from the door, so we can then add that to this bundle, and then we'll have everything here ready to just snip the cable tie and start plugging it in one by one into the Alpine so we know everything's plugged in before we put it in because there's nothing worse than plugging everything in, chucking it in, testing it and going, ah, oh, you know what, I need to take that back out because something isn't plugged in or something's not quite right. Uh, but if it's all here and held, we know we've got everything and we can check it off as we're plugging it in. So now let's get on with the microphone. Uh, right, so microphone. I like to fit these uh, nice and centrally just here, um, maybe sometimes just off to the side of the unit, uh, depending on what's going on, because there's a lot of plastic and stuff. Um, don't ever fit them over by the door, I know a lot of people do. Only trouble with that is, is if you're driving along and you've got the window open and you're trying to talk on the phone, the people who are trying to listen to you are gonna, just gonna pick up a whole ton of wind noise. So it's better off if you've got it as centrally as you can, it also means that your passengers can talk and, and things as well, and everyone can hear. Um, now the nice thing about the T6 and things is there is actually a little hole in the, um, in the roof line. It's pretty tricky for Matt to pick it up, but if I just tell you, then you just know. Um, and you can just see it as you look through this hole here. So what I'm gonna do is just undo the microphone a little bit, and then I'll poke the jack through the hole. I'll then grab it, pull all my slack through that I need. So I've just got a short amount of cable here. I'm just gonna put one little cable tie onto this loom to anchor it. So then when I run it across to here, and it's then anchored again here, we can try and remove any sort of slack that might bounce or anything like that. I'm then gonna cable tie down this loom that's in the A-pillar, because we don't want anything banging around or being loose or just twisted, because it's just nasty. Well then, once we've dropped it down the side, I'll then pick it up through here and then we'll run along and then we'll bring it out where the main stereo is, plug it in, bit of tape to hold it, and then we'll sort out the slack because there's always a whole ton of slack. So I'll just get on with that now. Right, that's all the cables in now. Uh, microphone is running down, cable tied down the A-pillar, brought down to here, taped on, and I've dealt with the slack and then I've run the GPS from the factory blue here um, through underneath the dash. Um, but what I try to do is I don't just 
go kind of straight across as the crow flies. I try to stay nice and high, um, out of the way of the steering column and out of the way of everything else. Again, it just it's just that extra few minutes, just a bit more care, keeps everything out of the way, keeps everything nice and tidy. And then I've brought it through to here. And again, what I've done is I've just poked it into my little bundle here with my cable tie. So I now know I've got everything here ready to build the Alpine and then start putting it in. So um, let's go build the Alpine. Right, so I've got everything out um, just here. I've put down a um, like a soft mat purely because I'm now gonna have to use the plastic fascia that we looked at earlier and I don't want it to get scratched or anything um, because I'm gonna have to be putting it onto the main unit with the pocket and the brackets and it all gets a bit kind of fumbly sometimes and you, as you want to you know lie it down like this to hold it all in place you don't want this to get scratched because that's what you're going to see um, so in terms of bits you're going to need for this you're going to need a pz2 screwdriver and a three mil allen key now if you, if you bought this kit um, from us and uh, your fitting it yourself you'll have also been obviously with your uh, your fitting kit, you'll get your little Allen key bolts, but we will have provided you with two little black PZ screws, just there, two of those, which then, when the whole assembly is on, screw into these two holes here, either side of the pocket, along with the brackets, but we'll go through that as I'm doing it. So, we'll make sure the unit is the correct way up, and then the pocket is gonna line up with this little lip here, this lip kind of latching up with this section here. That's your best way to kind of start. Then it all gets a bit kind of three, maybe four hands required, but you can do it with two, it's all good. Right, then you make sure that your brackets go this way round because when you took your radio out you would have noticed you had two locating lugs they go at the bottom so as you're working you'll you'll see that um how can i explain this the unit goes on like this and then the brackets go on either side like that so you've got this locating lug down the side down the bottom and then the angled section of the bracket is at the bottom as well like that so as long as it's going on like that you're going to be going in the right direction right Get some screws out. You get six, but you can just do four. Uh, so I just use the two holes at the top. So what we'll do, we'll start off. Now, one thing to remember is that um, you don't want to just go banging your screws in and just clamping it all up super tight because you'll find that as you're doing it, stuff moves and it wiggles around. And so if you then clamp it up, you'll get to the other side and go, ah, oh, that's not lined up. And you have to release it slightly and then it all becomes a bit of a faff. Right, so let's get a couple of screws just in here initially. Now you'll see when you line the pocket up and things, you'll be able to see which screw holes you need to be using because obviously when I flip it over, we have a selection of screw holes that we can use. Um, so I think if I'm correct, I think it's this one and this one we end up using. If I lie this on here, excuse the sound of the van outside. There you go, you can see there, we've got that screw hole and that screw hole. So we just take them off. We can then see it's those two there that we're aiming for. All right, so now what we can do is lie that down and just, I tend to kind of grip the top, poke my thumb in and it holds the pocket pretty much in place. I can then rest that on there. So that's now both sides are held in place. I can, I, you know, the pocket's gonna move a little bit, but that's fine at the moment. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the fascia and we, what we can do is we can make sure everything sits nice and flat on this back surface, because as soon as we know it's all sitting flat on this back surface, we can nip everything up and we know then that once the unit goes into the van and we put the fascia on, everything's gonna be sat where it should be. 
the, the great thing about these makes the look makes the job so much easier and so much nicer as a finished product so what we can do is grab everything there we go and the only tricky bit is the fact that this bit of the the framework obviously sits out proud so what i sometimes do is just sit with it on my lap and let that connection area kind of sit between my legs but if i hold those on there you can see i've got the bracket sitting nice and flat on there you see and on there and if i hold it up we can see the unit is sat nicely at the front there it's all sitting as it should be so what i can do is i can hang this off the edge so that's still holding itself like that make sure everything's lined up as i want it and then we can just start to nip everything up So there we go, we can see that's now sitting nice and flat. These tabs are all lined up with these. Everything's lined up, everything's sitting nice and flat. Now what we can do, we've got the two little holes just at the back here, are these lower holes here, where we'll just wind in the two screws to the pocket, and then uh, we'll be good to start poking it all into the van there. There we go, pockets all in, main drivers all in. And now what we can do is when I remove that fascia, that is all ready to go in, you see? So the brackets are all in place and we know that when we put it in the van and the brackets are sitting flat on their mounting surface, surface once we're ready, we can then put the fascia on and we know it's all gonna sit on nice and flat as we want it to. So what we'll do for the moment, is we'll just put this back in this little bag save any risk of anything getting damaged and then we'll go start putting it all in the van right so you may notice on the bench that i'd already started to kind of cloth some of the usb uh well both the usbs uh, just so that that's done uh, this one is the charging one that will come through to the glove box so it's nice just to have it cloth because it just looks a bit neater doesn't bang against stuff and then the other one yeah, which is the CarPlay one, is only cloth so far because obviously it's going to attach to our retention cable. So I'll then deal with the slack, take it all up out of the way so it's not banging around. Uh, right, so because these are so long, let's start off by feeding these in to here. So I lift up the main loom. There we go. Right, so we'll just pull those through so they're sitting there waiting. Now, this is where this cable tied bundle works a treat. Because now what I can do is cut this and then I can just go through one by one, plugging them all in and connecting them. So I know that everything is in and connected. So what we'll do is we'll start at the FM plug, shall we? Let's just work that through so it's not quite so crossed up. It's going to go into here. Just kind of line it up, give it a big old push, and then that goes in. Then what I like to do is just a bit of cloth, or um, you can use electrical tape. Just tape round. It's not going to come out, but you know, it's peace of mind, isn't it? Right, that's in there. Then our next one in the bundle looks probably like this one here. What we got? There we go, let's take that under there. How's that looking? Oh no, it's all very crossed up, isn't it? There we go, that's better. And that's gonna go into there. Then we have our microphone one, which goes into this one here. Then we can grab our dab and bring that through. Now that's gonna be a little bit shorter purely because of the factory loom. 
So what is nice to do is try and plug it in with the L shape facing upwards and then what you can do is you can, to take the strain off this plug here, you can just put a little cable tie around this loom and the dab so that it doesn't get pulled and ripped out, damaged or anything like that. So let's do that now quickly. Right, now we've got GPS. GPS can come through here and plugs in there, like that. And then we should just have left just one, which is the power cable. So, put that in. I like to put my hand underneath and then just push against it to get a nice little click. Make sure that's in. And then we're good to go. One last little final check. Um, sometimes we fit the phonos, um, sometimes we don't. This chap's told me that he's not fussed about having the phonos, so we'll, we'll leave it out. That's not a problem. And then what we're gonna do is just gonna carefully feed everything in gradually. Um, and then we're gonna aim to have everything kind of go down as much as possible, because as we've got more gap at the bottom than we have at the top. So we're gonna carefully feed everything in. Obviously there's quite a lot going on now what with uh, you know, two quad locks and we've got the can box as well. So it feels like I've got something under this right hand side. There we go, look at that, straight in. Now I've already bought in the fascia as well. Slide that on, and then because we had it all set up earlier on the bench, we know now, there you go, that's all lining up, and it's all gonna go in nicely. So we can bung some screws in. There we go, so that's the unit, that's the unit screwed in. Um, now what we'll do is I'm going to just sort out this slot here. So this is obviously uh, the USB coming from the retention here, and this is coming from the Alpine. So we're gonna clip those together. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna sort out this slack, get rid of it, pardon me, up here, uh, cable tied up out of the way. And then what we're, able to, what we're able to do then is before we put the vents in, we'll stick the uh, main screen on and then give it all a test, make sure everything's working. Once we know it is, we can then take the screen off, pop everything that we need to put in, and um, then finally put the screen on and do a final setup and we're all done. Right, so um, I've sorted the USBs out. What I've done is I just taped the, uh, the join together and then created a nice little bundle, cable tied it up out of the way onto the um, like dash, uh, dash bar that goes along. Uh, just means that it's nice and accessible still if need be, um, but it's also not going to rattle or anything like that. Uh, the other USB is also just tucked into here at the moment, and I'll, I'll probably just do a little something with the blank that goes in there just to make it a lot nicer and neater. Um, so I've tested the screen, make sure everything's kind of powered up and doing what it needs to do. So now we're good to put everything back together. So we'll get the vents. Um, one thing I have done is you'll you'll see when you've got your vents off there are two kind of um like squared off kind of tabs that sit up in this area here and this area here um just cut those off you could um i've used a dremel um but what you could do you probably just use some cutters or something then maybe shave it down with a knife make it a bit neater what it does it just stops them sitting against this little raised section here because otherwise what you it's not massive, but you end up with this area just sitting ever so slightly proud of this. And you know, some people wouldn't be bothered, but we noticed it, so that's just something we do. Uh, when you're sliding the uh, vents back in, it's exactly it's the reverse of what you did before. Just be mindful that when you're wiggling it in, that you've just got to get this top edge to go nicely underneath your 12 volt socket that you might have in your dash. If you haven't got that, 
it's easy. So let's just wiggle these in. You just gotta find that little sweet spot. As with everything on this one, it's gonna fight me. Oh, there we go, that's, that's going in. And then this side doesn't want to go in. There we go. All right, it's all going in. And then you just go around and clip it all in. And we're good and we're happy. So now we can get our screen. Um, as I said at the start of the video, when I was showing you the screen, there was um, four little screws here. Now you can undo those and then you can move this slider up and down depending on where you want the screen to sit in your dash. We move it up one screw, which means that when the screen is in, it kind of half covers the pocket, but it means when you then tilt the screen, you've got full access to the pocket. Um, but obviously it's personal preference. And then in your kit, you've got this backing plate, which screws on. And in the, um, in the large plastic wallet that had the big piece of plastic in, you have these little kind of covering surrounds that just tidy up those kind of mounting holes and stuff. You don't have to stick them on, but they do look nicer once it is stuck on. So let's, uh, let's chuck the screen on. This plate here just slides into this gap here and lines up with everything. And then you'll get two nice clicks from these two clips here, which go into these square holes. There we go. So that is, that's on. Um, it's not just gonna fall off, so you can let go of it, you don't have to worry, I don't have that. Uh, and then in this little bag here, we've got four of these kind of hexagonal Phillips heads. Um, and they will, you will have seen them, there's four mounting holes that drop down in here. Now the two kind of forward ones, if you like, they're closer to you, nice and easy to get in, they just go straight in. The ones that are closer to the dash, a bit trickier, um, because as you're screwing in the front ones, your screwdriver will just sit in nice and straight and it'll go in. But annoyingly, to get the angle of the rear ones, you will have to get your screwdriver to sit an ever so slight angle as it's going in to create that angle. So it's a little bit fiddly, but it does go in. And as long as you get all four of those bolts in, it means that the drive is fully secured so that when you're, when you're angling it and moving it around, you're not putting anything under strain or, or you know, risking any sort of damage or anything like that. So, that's, so I always do the front ones first, just because they're easiest to get to. That one typically has been a right pain, but just you know, be patient and it goes in and it's fine. Um, now, before you can put on your final kind of cover plate um, to finish everything off, you have to insert this one. Now, this one uh, works with two little kind of micro switches um, that if this isn't in, it doesn't allow the unit to power up. So um, that's always the first thing to check if you have powered it up and, it, and it's not working for some reason. If that's not in, that's the reason why. So we just line that up into the two holes at the top there. Make sure that sits in. And now we know even if we don't put on this final cover, that unit's gonna power up because that is in. So now we'll put this on. And then we've got two little black screws that go in there. got left to do then is just mount um, the microphone mount now I'll just quickly briefly show you but um, we'll probably sign it off in a minute I reckon um, so the the mount comes as a bigger square mount that's got like a two layers to it but what we like to do is just um, 
slim it down so it's not quite so thick and then just make it a small amount and then put two little screw holes in it ready for it to be mounted up. Now you can leave it as the big amount and just put some like double-sided tape on and stick it onto somewhere smooth, but it's, it's completely up to you. Um, I've just done that because we like to make the microphones as, as kind of sleek and as discreet as possible. Um, but in terms, so I'll get on and do that in a minute, but just so you can see it's all working, let's take this off. Let's grab the key. <clears throat> And there we go, one halo installed into a T6. Um, that's it, I hope you find this video useful. Um, you'll be able to use it as you're going through. I believe I've covered everything. Um, really nice install, it's dead popular as you've probably seen on a lot of our videos of upgrades of vans and things. But we just thought it'd be a nice thing to show you how to do it. So you can either look at it and go, well, you know what? Yeah, I can tackle that myself. Or you might look and go, hmm, yeah, don't want to get too involved with that sort of thing. At which point, come down to us and, uh, and we'll put it in to exactly the same standard we put this one in today. Um, so obviously follow all our socials, like and subscribe and you know, leave a comment on any other how-tos you might want to be interested in. And um, follow us on all our social medias and things and uh, get in touch if you want anything doing. Thanks for watching.